ladies and gentlemen. This question comes down, again, to a very simple question on both sides of the house, and that is what is best for innovation? Uh, and on our side of the house, we've really provided uh, two prongs to proving that this is the best approach to innovation. Now, the first uh, is to look at the existing context and to show that there are no major problems as it stands. So the status quo, why not perfect, uh, works to an acceptable degree. Secondly, uh, we've gone on to show you actively how the patent system is critical to a vibrant uh, economy where innovation can take place and be recognised uh, and realised and commercialised in an effective manner. So before I move into these, uh, let me turn to this first uh, issue of there being uh, no major problems. And so we've accepted on this side of the house that the patent system isn't perfect. And we're not here to tell you uh, that it's flawless, that it's super easy, that the government's come up with a great new website where you just type things in and you add in what you want and it all happens just like registering a company. And we think it would be great if we could optimise the system. We think there's ways for improvement. And indeed, the bill uh, which has inspired this debate uh, was very much focused uh, on making improvements to the patent system. And there are some substantive improvements in the system that we've referenced. But broadly, we say that the problems aren't fundamental. And the only problem left standing uh, from the affirmative side of the house is that it's really expensive to patent things. Uh, and we've shown you uh, that it's necessary to be able to maintain this ability. Uh, you should be able to patent things. The, the fact it's expensive isn't a good enough reason to take that out of the toolkit. Secondly, uh, we know that innovation exists as it stands, that regularly uh, parties uh, are frequently licensing ideas to one another, and that the Android situation is very much the exception, the exception to the rule. It's when we accept that at the fringes, uh, the patent system hasn't been perfect, uh, so disputes uh, have arisen in those sort of situations. But then again, we know that in that context, that dispute uh, is one still before the courts, one that hasn't been settled, uh, and one that we would say uh, isn't going to see the Android phones ripped out of your hand. So we would say that the patent system as it stands isn't going to be the end of Android. To move to this more important question of how the patent system, in fact, incentivizes innovation, though, and we would uh, provide, again, or we have provided uh, two reasons, uh, three reasons for this. Firstly, uh, it levels the playing field. So for, for small companies, in fact, patents are often a critical uh, mechanism uh, in which they're able uh, to compete or engage with big companies. And we had really good analysis from the, our side of the house with respect, uh, particularly in the context of pharmaceuticals. But that same situation uh, exists in startups in the software space. So companies like Skype, uh, before they were able to develop a big network of VoIP users, uh, relied on their software patents and peer-to-peer -peer, uh, voice over IP, and able to develop a successful business and to grow what it was, and indeed to achieve uh, the venture capital necessary to grow that business. And indeed, uh, we refer to situations uh, like Microsoft's 10 to 1 input output on spending on licensing. That there are plenty of companies, big and small, that engage uh, with Microsoft uh, and other big companies uh, in licensing their intellectual property rights and are able, as a small company who's simply not able uh, to just push out their browser with Microsoft, sadly, Windows isn't allowed to do that anymore either. Um, <laughs> but there's no companies without a network uh, to realise that sort of IP are able to use software patents to sit down and have the conversation and to uh, be rewarded for that. And for that reason, it protects innovation. Uh, and to move to that question more specifically, we provide uh, four reasons under that heading. Uh, and firstly, uh, we would say that in the, the context of protecting invention as it, was, as it were, we've given you analysis and critiqued this uh, comparison of books and software and said that Books, easy to write, they all work by just spreading them out, and that's how we read them. Uh, whereas software is complicated, larger barriers to entry, and so patents with respect to software are very different to copyright with respect to books. Secondly, to turn to commercialization, we've given you clear analysis about how it reduces the risk uh, of investing in these companies and supporting them and giving them the capital they need to develop. And whether that comes from venture capital or simply having something to secure a loan against to launch your company, that patents are often the only effective way to protect those rights and to grow that business. Finally, uh, we've shown you how it leads to a more open situation, that in fact, instead of 
pulling everything together and welding the box shut and not letting anyone know how something works, that you're required to file a patent that people can see and is open and that you're able to negotiate in a transparent way, license and share. Uh, and finally we would say that the patent system requires people to come, with some, come up with something new. So when they see uh, Apple's latest patents for great new touch interfaces, that while they can't commercialise that exact type of software, that they're able to see the new ideas they develop and develop new and innovative ways to interact. And that's why there's, there's no issues with Android's touch interface. They're able to do it in new and different ways. Uh, so altogether, on this side of the house, we've given you a clear case uh, that patents as they stand in New Zealand do not present a major problem. And that while I would love to magic the most efficient and easy to use patent system uh, with just one click of the finger, that the removing software patents, uh, in fact, would do far greater damage in removing a necessary tool that incentivizes innovation. In fact, by wiping them off the table would do far more harm to innovation than software patents or patents in general have ever done. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.